What's up everybody, this is Chris Sarai bringing you another edition of the Car Concierge Show. The show that helps you with the buying, selling, maintaining, and repairing of all of your vehicles. I'm your host Chris Sarai. Today's show we're going to bring you a couple of different topics. We're going to start off with a couple recalls that Ford has come out for the F-150, messing with one of my favorite vehicles. Also we're going to talk about Rivian and them deciding to partner up with one of the bigger automakers um, not only to help with any problems down the line but um, a subject that I've talked about a lot where we will see a lot of these EV companies partner up with either the big three or some automaker that has already had a foot in the auto industry here in America and last but not least we're going to talk about of course the CD Global cyber attack that has been affecting over 15,000 dealerships around the world. It's just been getting worse and worse over the days and we're just going to touch on that as well. So let's start off. We're going to talk about Ford and then mess with one of my favorite vehicles, the F-150. F-150 has been a mainstay for quite some time in the auto industry specifically in areas where there's a lot of farming going on so and they're having a couple of problems with this vehicle and of course it's all about research and development as I've said many many a time it's on the block Ford is recalling over 500,000 F-150 pickup trucks from the 2014 model year in the United States. The recall is due to an issue where the transmissions can unexpectedly downshift to first gear at any speed, increasing the risk of a crash. The problem is caused by a lost signal between the transmission speed sensor and the powertrain control computer, which can also be caused by corrosion or connector pin issues. Owners may see a malfunction light before downshifting occurs, and in some cases, signals can restore while driving, but a restart may be needed to fix the issue. Dealers will update the powertrain control software free of charge with repairs expected to be available in the third quarter of 2024. For all things money, visit Benzinga.com. All right, so pretty standard recall. Um, definitely a software recall. Definitely what we're going to experience a lot in here in the near future is a lot of software recalls and specifically for EV vehicles but pretty much all vehicles are going to experience a lot of software updates because a lot of these vehicles are just big old more computers bang, less on wheels. Video, Carl's Jr. Feature, inner three. So, so expect if you bought a new car over the last three or four years expect that you're going to receive a lot of software updates on your vehicles. Um, Ford F-150 is just a you know a situation where I mean this is a pretty serious recall talking about downshifting when you're driving at any speed so anything could happen so definitely get into your dealership well I wouldn't go into your dealership right now about it if it's just unless it's just extremely bad because once again dealerships are crippled right now but we're gonna tackle that here in a minute we're just gonna get through uh, one more storyline and then we'll jump into the CDK global situation. So next up, of course, Rivian is up and doing well. They've decided that they're going to partner with Volkswagen. Um, I think it's more about this, uh, their software than anything else, but uh, Volkswagen has decided that it's going to put in $5 billion towards uh, their partnership with Rivian. Now I've been talking. To, um, there's, I've been done. I've done several shows talking about how these EV companies are going to start to partner with either the big three or Nissan or Volkswagen in this situation. But it's one of those situations where we're getting to a point where it's always best to have allies, specifically when you're you know conducting new business or you're creating new ideas or new products and they already have a a foothold as it were on the industry and they have the capital to invest in you and to help you along the way so that's what Rivian decided they're going to do and we're going to check out a couple of stories Let's see in 
You know what really caught my, my eye on this whole investment? Obviously, the billions of dollars, crucial, but next generation uh, vehicles and software. What are we talking about here? Is this autonomous driving or is it something else? This is uh, something else. This is really about the software inside of the vehicle. Car companies, traditional car companies, have been struggling for years to do what Silicon Valley, what California companies have been doing for the smartphone in the car. That's where we've seen Tesla and the likes of Rivian and Lucid uh, really kind of run circles around traditional car companies. And Volkswagen itself has tried to do software for years and years and has essentially uh, burned billions of dollars and just had products that have had lots of glitches and have had lots of problems and a huge frustration and embarrassment for folks uh, in Wolfsburg. All right, so interesting. So really it's a technological advancement for Volkswagen. So on the other side, besides the billions of dollars, which I'm not trying to minimize at all, $5 billion is a lot of money. What does Rivian get out of this deal from Volkswagen? Well, in some, in, in, in hope they would get some uh, year, hundreds or not hundreds, but generations of manufacturing prowess. But really, this is a lot about the money. This is uh, Rivian has been burning through a lot of cash. Uh, like a lot of electric vehicle startups, cash is king. This is a cash intensive business. And to, to do the growth plans that they have projected, they need money. Uh, those vehicles, as you point out, that they've been making have been burning that money. And to get to that point where they can be viable, uh, they need the, the, the cash to keep doing that. It's, it's not unique to them. You go back uh, years and years ago, a Tesla was in a very similar position. And its deals with the likes of Toyota and uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, helped them get over the hump until they could become viable. All right, so here's a big question for you, Tim, and I hope you have an answer because I was trying to figure it out myself. Rivian's losing money on vehicles. At the same time, Volkswagen's facing increasing pressure when it comes to EVs in Europe, its home market, because Chinese EVs are coming in and they're just lower cost. So how does a company that's having a hard time making money on electric vehicles teaming up with a, a company that's you know, losing market share on price, how does that actually work out long term? That's a great question. The old uh, math, the automotive industry math. Uh, the hope here, uh, at least for <laughs> Rivian, be good, is, that be, <laughs> is that they'll get more uh, scale as they kind of expand across uh, Volkswagen. Uh, and it's a game of pennies. Uh, the, the bigger scale they can get, they hope to take out more, more cost. So long term, does this help Volkswagen recapture market share in Europe and even globally when it comes to EVs? Long term, the hope here is that this will help Volkswagen in the software business where they really have struggled. Uh, one of the reasons car companies traditionally have struggled with software is because they tend to folk, they tend to get this kind of stuff from suppliers. Mm -hmm. So the risk here is that they won't have this capacity in-house necessarily. But the challenge is they haven't been able to do it themselves. So they have to look to some place that has expertise in it. All right. So... And we've been talking about it for a little while. We knew that uh, these, and like he said, it was much like Tesla did when they were coming up, partner with Mercedes. And it's about uh, getting companies that have the financial backing to support you in the hard times. Um, they burned through a lot of money. Rivian has burned through a lot of money putting their vehicles out. And they have a good product. Um, they're coming out with a couple of more designs that uh, should sell fairly well but of course they're running out of money and like he said Volkswagen is trying its best to get its foothold on the EV market get back market share that it's lost it's lost massive market share due to recalls and the EVs coming out so this is this should be a win-win for both but this is a game of pennies like he said it's, it's you know there, there's no guarantees on anything it's pretty much a situation where Volkswagen just throwing money at a problem and hoping that it fixes itself Rivian is using Volkswagen's Volkswagen's money to uh, you know further their position to bankroll the money that they've lost so they can continue to make product and continue to grow their market share so we will continue to see it happen I want to give a quick shout out to the stock, the Rivian stock. I was going to check out a little story that I saw about the Rivian stock and how it soared. Let me see if I can find that real quick. All right, this ain't the, the one I want to show, but um, we're going to see what this day trader is talking about on the Rivian stock.
Lee Smokes. Check this out, guys. <laughs> Not this. Pretty significant news. Rivian stock soars because Volkswagen, one of the largest car manufacturers in the world, is willing to invest up to $5 billion in a joint venture. Now, you might be like, Ricky, why do I care? First off, boom, 49.92%. Second, you might be like, Ricky, wow, you must have a lot of money in Rivian. Not one penny. Rivian stock was performing super shitty. Let's be honest, right? Rivian stock went from the highs of 179 all the way down to lows of $8. And when I tell you I was not certain, I was not certain, right? We all knew that, but let's be honest. Rivian, out of all the other EV car manufacturers except Tesla, was was really setting up for a lot of partnerships. They partnered up with Amazon. I, I've, I've seen them really try to put an effort, but man, they were burning through so much capital. Rivian announced in their previous quarter that every vehicle that they were producing, they were losing about 35,000. All right, guys, this isn't the guy that I was wanting to look at. Um, so we're gonna just move on. This guy's definitely not a bag chaser. Because if you were a bag chaser, you would know that we were invested in Rivian stock a long time ago. I have a decent amount of Rivian stock myself. I had fantastic gains, so but I'm not a financial guru. I go, I watch, um, I, I do Stock Club with the bag chasers with Anton Daniels. You should definitely check those guys out if you're talking about stock. But in this situation, we're just talking about the simple fact that Rivian stock has soared due to the massive investment from Volkswagen you know if we want to take the gains or not we haven't decided yet but definitely something that we were watching already so we kind of knew that something good was going to happen with Rivian and it did so let's hope that this propels them to a bright future a bright partnership with Volkswagen and I, of course we do see more partnerships coming down the line we definitely do we definitely see, I know that, we or we already saw that Nissan was trying to partner with Fisker, but I think that failed when no when notification that Fisker was going bankrupt came out. Um, so, but we do see more partnerships coming down in the near future. So, let's uh, move on to the big fish. The CDK global cyber type that has affected over 15,000 dealerships has still going on. We are in the know that they have identified the culprits, as it were, the ransomware culprits that have attacked them. They're saying they're somewhere out in uh, England somewhere. We know better, but, you know, we're not going to say nothing. We don't want them to start cyber attacking us. Um, we know that they're asking of upwards of $68 million. What we don't know is if CDK is global CDK global has decided that they're going to pay the amount or not but there's been a lot of movement so we want to look at a lot of video we're going to go through a lot of um, the articles in automotive news and we're just going to get caught up on everything that's been going on so so first up we're going to check out an article over at CBS News uh, that came out um, Earlier today, we're just going to show the, the latest articles that we've seen come out and we'll evaluate them as we go along. Back in a company that provides software for thousands of car dealers in North America says it's a quote ransom event. The hack on CDK Global happened last week. It's still disrupting about 15,000 car sellers that depend on the company's software to run their businesses. Many have resorted to doing things manually with pen and paper until systems are restored. According to a Bloomberg report, the group that says it's behind the attack is demanding tens of millions of dollars in ransom. CBS News Money Watch reporter Megan Cerullo joins us with more. Um, Megan, t talk about when, when this cyber attack happened and, and, and what happened. The attack took place Tuesday evening, CDK said. What it did was it took down its operations proactively to prevent the attack from spreading. It started bringing its systems back up again Wednesday because it powers more than half of the industry. Yeah. Uh, 15,000 dealers, the car dealerships across the U.S. rely on their systems. Once it brought them back online, it suffered a second cyber attack. And we're talking about last Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's 
first off, they didn't take it down before the cyber attack. That's not how it went down. That's that is not how it went down. We know for a fact that the the attack attack took the system down with, before a CDK even knew it. But we'll keep going. Six days already that car dealerships have not been able to conduct business as usual. Why are hackers targeting car dealerships? Let, we're gonna go back real quick. Have not been able look at this able map. To conduct business as usual. Why are hackers targeting car dealerships? Why are hackers targeting? More time. Able to conduct business as usual. Why are hackers? All right. So. Let's look at this map real quick. I want to look at this map, CDK dealership experience. If you look at the map, it shows that CDK runs parts, finance, service, accounting. There's some. There's one more that it keeps going on here, but there's targeting sales. So CDK pretty much runs all the systems in most of these dealerships. All of the systems. They they. Once again, I am still in the automotive industry. Um, I run a collision center, and it is disrupting me getting my OEM parts, original equipment parts for the vehicles that I'm repairing. So a lot of my vehicles are not going out as fast as they standardly would because I'm still waiting on parts, still waiting on to be able to invoice parts, still waiting on to be able to deliver parts. But it's affecting every nook and cranny of these dealerships. And it will continue to. And there's big problems with this simple fact that they're cutting these systems back on and the malware is still in the system that could steal very important information about you, about your car, about where you live, about your credit ratings, about your credit information that you use to pay your your car bills. It's it's all of these systems are integrated and can be tapped into with the correct malware system. Car dealerships. This kind of attack is becoming increasingly common. It's not an accident that they targeted targeted this kind of company because they were well aware of how it would impact the customer. And because so many customers are affected, because mm -hmm. car dealers can't sell cars and customers can't buy cars, that puts a lot of pressure on CDK to pay the ransom quickly. And are they gonna pay? That we don't know. I guess they may not even say. Uh, that we don't know. They, they haven't indicated. Uh, Bloomberg did cite a source familiar with the matter saying that CDK is planning on making a payment to the group that is reportedly based out of Eastern Europe. And in the meantime, they just, they're just, as we mentioned, right. doing in some cases things the old fashioned way with pen and paper. It's not affecting the cars themselves, it's just how the dealer process works. That's right. These systems are relied upon to manage payroll, inventory, customer relationships. They really do are the lifeblood of these businesses, they're the engines that power them. And so the, the, the lucky few dealerships that use competitor software are probably yeah. doing pretty well right now. But those that depend on CDK are, are resorting to, to writing orders down on sticky notes and using pen and paper to transact. But for example, these systems monitor and track uh, inventory of parts and repairs, and a lot of those orders have ground to a halt. Because it's not like the dealers, even if they're using the CDK software, discouraging people from coming in to buy a car right now. I would assume no, they're No, they're not. trying to keep their customers as happy as they can under the circumstances. Okay, Megan Cerullo, thank you very much. It's just, it's, it's, it's really bad, guys. I mean, they're they're playing it off really well. It's really bad. You, the the access that if this was a a real cyber attack and the access that the particular malwares can gain from these systems is is detrimental. Is extremely detrimental. Tennessee facing new challenges. This after the group CDK Global fell victim to a cyber attack. Six on your side, reporter Molly O'Brien checked with two local dealerships about how that attack is affecting business. Cyber attack on CDK Global causing disruptions for car dealerships right here in Knoxville. Our leads is where we've kind of been affected a little bit. It takes us a little bit longer to get our lead in right now, uh, but we still get it in. So it's not like 
it's more of an inconvenience for us than it is a stoppage. But I have talked to several dealerships who said, hey, you know, it shut us down for a couple of days. CDK offers a pro for dealerships to use that helps with daily operations like car sales, insurance, repairs, and services. This system's used uh, at our dealership for follow-up. So if you uh, were in here looking at an automobile or you're waiting for a call back, it's not because we don't want to call you and we're not trying to be lazy. We just don't have the means to be able to do that right now. The impact on dealerships can trickle down to buyers. Some customers. I think that's personally a, a, a problem anyway. I, I'm a real believer in, in, in keeping your contact with your customer, customer pretty personal. So, you know, you should be calling them anyway. You should never let a computer contact your customers regularly. I digress. First come in and they want to buy right now, right there. They want that car. And uh, some people come in and they're more methodical. They do their, uh, do all their homework. It's different for each and every, uh, every customer that's coming in, depending on what you're coming and using your dealership for. With a new set of challenges, Campbell sees the cyber attack as a learning experience for some dealerships. One of the best things dealers can do is to maybe diversify a little bit and not have their lead system and their DMS with the same company. That way, if this does happen to you, that you're not completely down. As far as when the issues will be resolved, we're told there's no definitive time frame. It could be as late as June 30th, but it could be a little sooner, it could be a little later. So they, they kind of told dealers to go ahead and make plans. In Knoxville, only O'Brien, six on your side. White tells us the cyber attack should not deter buyers. Business is still open. Buyers are deterred. They don't care. The people who are trying to get their cars fixed, the people who are trying to get their cars fixed, they're deterred. Because a major, major part of this system is how it works in the service department. Writing up your repair orders, ordering your parts, getting the schematics to fix your vehicles. It's so important to so many factors of a dealership and, and the, the people who did this attack have got, it, it, it's, it's a perfect attack. It's a perfect attack against the perfect entity in the automotive industry. The perfect attack. I mean, it will it cripples a, a dealership to the point where everything is backed up. Think about it this way. Once these systems are up and running, they have been down for eight days, nine days, maybe 10 days. All of the information from those days, all the sales, all the service, all of the financing, everything is going to have to be integrated back into those computer systems. So somebody's going to have to sit there and sift through 10, 12 days of information and pretty much inline it back into the system so that the systems are running smoothly again. And then, of course, because the systems are down, the systems are going to need to be reset, rebooted, information that is going to be lost because the systems were down it's just going to be a horrible situation for everybody it is and it already is it already is so what we're going to do we're going to check out a couple of articles from our favorite supplier automotive news automotive news and check out some of the things that they said recently about what's going on so First up, they're talking about the auto sales. So this is from about six hours ago, guys. June, you, June U.S. auto sales could take significant hit from CDK outage. And this is written by Michael Martinez. The cyber text on CDK Global and resulting turmoil dealerships around the U.S. could reduce June new vehicle sales by about 100,000, according to one forecast. J.D. Power and Global Data estimate that U.S. light vehicle sales for the month will fall by 2.6 to 7.2% from a year earlier for a volume of 1.27 million to 1.33 million. 
They originally had expected sales of 1.41 million before the ransomware attacks that began June 19 created a significant disruption. The industry's seasonally adjusted annualized rate of sales is expected to land between 14.7 million and 15.4 million vehicles down from 16.22 million in June 2023. While JD Power and Global Data said a range of outcomes are possible because of because of uncertainty about how soon the problem will be resolved, they noted that any effect on deliveries could be made up quickly in July. CDK said it didn't expect and didn't expect a resolution before June 30th. Sales will be delayed, but the majority will likely occur in July shortly after the situation is rectified and sales are being made despite system outages, Thomas King, president of the Data and the Analytics Division of J.D. Power said in a statement. Indeed, if there is one thing that the pandemic demonstrated to the auto industry, it's that dealers are very adept at dealing with adversity and have been effective in rapidly identifying ways to deliver vehicles to buyers. Other forecasting firms don't expect CDK's issues to hamper sales as much. S&P Global Mobility estimates that June sales will grow 1% to 1.4 million vehicles, while Cox Automotive expects a 0.4% increase to 1.39 million. Cox predicted a SS, SAAR of 16 million vehicles, while S&P sees the rate rising to 16.2 million, which would be among the highest for any month since May 2021. June auto sales are expected to, sus to sustain the recent progress in the market, Chris Hobson, principal analyst at CSP Global Mobility, said in a statement. Supported by growing incentive and inventory levels, the monthly sales pace will have advanced every month in the second quarter. They guess it. The Cox and J.D. Power Global data forecast show new vehicle sales up 04 to 2.9% in the first half from year earlier levels. Cox expects Toyota, Honda, Volkswagen, and Mazda to have the largest first half sales increases. It predicts General Motors will remain the top selling automaker despite a 0.1% de decline in the first six months of 2024, with Toyota, Ford, Hyundai, and Honda rounding out the top five. Okay, matter of fact, we're just going to go straight to the next article. Automaker tells DMS providers to expect security audits in wake of CDK cyber attack executives say. Okay, this is from today by Mark Homer. Concerned by the CDK global cyber attack, some auto manufacturers are developing plans to audit all U.S. dealership management system providers to make sure that security protocols have, can help prevent future events, a DMS executive said. Sharon Kitzman, president of Domain DMS, told Automotive News on June 26 that she has heard from several car makers already. We've already been contacted by multiple manufacturers that we are already certified with for their integration for things like warranty, claims, and parts ordering, Kitzman said. They're just letting us know that they will be auditing all of the DMS providers that they are certified with. She would not name the specific manufacturers, but said they will be looking at security protocols to see if any are insufficient to fend off a cyber attack. In a June 26 statement, Reynolds and Riz Reynolds President Chris Walsh said, the company so far has not received any audit requests from any manufacturers. We have been continuously working with our all our partners, including manufacturers, to help ensure we are doing all we can to keep our technology and customers secure, Walsh said. Hmm. A Techion spokesperson said the company has not been asked for an audit. Cox Automotive, owner of De Dealer Track DMS, did not address whether automakers have said they would audit their cybersecurity, but released the following statement. We are in regular conversation with our OEM dealer and lender clients about our security posture and what may, what may be required to operate in a way that pr prioritizes the safety of their data and continuity of their business operations, Cox said. Security at Cox Automotive is a paramount and our, appro and our approach is multi-layered across our entire enterprise. We're continually monitoring our networks and systems and take actions with our client security and business continuity at the forefront. Eric Neckbar, president of cybersecurity services provider Helion Technology, said auditing DMS companies about their cybersecurity practices is a big step for manufacturers. This is a significant shift in the approach automakers are taking towards cybersecurity, Neckbar said. A warning to pursue audits implies that automakers expect DMS providers to take full responsibility for their cybersecurity measures. 
And at the same time, the move to audit cybersecurity protocols across DMS providers may not have much practical value, Nekbar said. I would rather see a push for ad adopt adoption of established cybersecurity standards, Nekbar said. This could set clear expectations and requirements for security measurements, security measures, ensuring a more uniform level of protection across the board. All right. So, and one more. I want to see what the CEO of CDK said. Okay. With CDK's reputation challenge, CEO Brian McDonald defends CyberTech response. Now, that's what threw me for a second before because I, for a second there, I thought that my brain said that CDK's own CEO was named Walsh, but his name is Brian McDonald. Of course, this is from yesterday, written by our man Mark Homer over at Automotive News. This is the dude here. CDK's global reputation continues to face challenges in the wake of two cyber attacks June 19th, with the news the situation could last beyond June 30th and lawsuits have already been filed. CEO Brian McDonald is defending the company's response. In a statement issued exclusively to Automotive News, his first public remarks since the attacks, McDonald said he and the company are working to manage the situation and bring its dealership management system back online. Personally, I've spoken to and continue to communicate with many dealers, OEMs, and partners directly, he said, and I will continue to do so until we see this through. Yeah, that was simple and to the point. All right, guys, so this is serious. And I'm trying my best to make sure you guys understand how serious this situation is. We're going to check out one more story a line about this. But before we do that, I just want to make you understand how serious this is. Okay? Not only is these dealerships disrupted. Not only is it going to be hard for you to get your parts. Hard for you to get your vehicle repaired. Hard to get your oil changes done hard to get your new car bought but it's worse than that it's extremely extremely worse than that because if this is a cyber attack with a malware system then what they can do if they can bring if they can access all of these dealerships systems what can they do they can gather all of your information how many of you have bought cars at these dealerships? How many of you have bought cars with CDK Global as their DMS system, as their primary system all throughout their company? How many of you people have given these dealerships your social security numbers, your credit card information, where you live? You know that with the technology the way it is, you can get access to start your vehicle from the internet, from these dealerships, from these parts departments. You can use this information to make keys to start your cars. This is extremely serious. The information that can be gathered from a dealership can cripple cripple a, a whole city it definitely can cripple you if you bought a car from one of these dealerships and all all of your information think about all the information that you have to give up to buy a car your license information your credit card information your security information your credit information all this information is given in lieu of getting your car bought or repaired and if this is a true cyber attack with a malware system, they are taking your information from these dealerships. And that's not what they're talking about. I have yet to see them talk about that. I, did, I think I saw one article talking about some information that one dealership thought was uh, taken from their systems, but there's been no significant article, not even in automotive news that I could see talking about how these cyber attacks can access your personal information that is filed in these systems at these dealerships. 
So, real quick, that's how serious it is. But one more thing I want to look at was CDK is talking about how it is getting back to normal and how they are putting out a couple of initial tests to make sure that it works. Now, my question really is, are they doing tests after they paid the bill and the cyber attackers are not attacking them anymore? Or they are, is this a test of them implementing something that is going to allow you to use this system with added cybersecurity protection so that this can't happen again? That is the question because I, I know that because I've used my initial uh, CDK Global uh, computer system to help a dealership that is close by where I live, you know, because a couple of good friends of mine and they needed some help with their parts. So we used my computer and it worked perfectly. It's fantastic. If y'all need to know what we did, I'll let you know. And of course, if we didn't connect it to the system itself. We just used the uh, laptop system that I have and we integrated it and you know we just we were able to um, you know set some part systems up and you know do some things in the service department got nothing to do with sales not my bag so but CDK has rolled out initial situation where they're testing out um, let's just check it out I'm gonna read it to you real quick okay last but not least okay CDK says small initial test group of dealers dealers back on DMS eight days after cyber attack. So they've got a small group of dealers back up and running. How are the other dealers feel about that? Let's keep reading. The news comes after CDK told dealers the DMS hours was unlikely to end before June 30th. This is my man Mark Homer, and this was written today about four hours ago. All right. CDK, CD, <clears throat> excuse me, CDK Global, a week after two cyber attacks crippled its dealership management system for thousands of customers, may have turned a corner after a successful test reboot Wednesday. We have, su we have successfully brought a small initial test group of dealers live on the dealer management system, DMS, and once validation is complete, we will begin phasing in other dealers, the company said in a late afternoon statement issued to Automotive News. We are also actively working to bring live additional applications including our customer relationship management CRM and service solutions and our customer care channels back online. I added that last part, okay? So, now, what do I, what do I have to say about this? It just matters if they've paid the bill. If they've already paid the cyber attackers and standard league, if you you know, pay them off and they remove the malware, you up and good. If this system has been infected with a malware system that is going to, once you turn it back on, is going to start downloading information to some place with credit card information, car information, credit information, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. I, I, if this is true, I'd almost want to say that to dealerships, man, y'all better get y'all rentals in, rental zone. Y'all better call Cox Automotive. Y'all start need to start preparing to change y'all DMS system. Because if they have not, and, and that's the key, we don't know. They're not going to tell us if they paid the bill. They're not going to tell us if they paid the ransom. It would be unwise for them to tell us if they paid the ransom. Either they, they just fix the problem, say, hey, it's up and running, y'all. It's cool. Knock y'all selves out. This is tied to our finance department inside our dealerships. All the information that people have to give up to a dealership to buy a car. If that system is downloaded and handed out to whoever, <laughs> evil will definitely strike. So, be mindful guys, you know I've been saying lately that it's, it's just, unless you are rolling in the dough, stay, stick with the hoopty that you have, buy from the homie around the corner or something, because 
It's hard out here for a person that's going to buy a car at a dealership. It's hard for dealerships. It's hard for everybody. But let's hope that it gets better. I think I'm going to keep on keeping on with the CDK Global thing. It's really tied into a lot of what's going on in my situation. So, you know, I'm going to just keep you guys informed. If we have to do a show pretty much every day until it's fixed, that's probably what we'll end up do. So I'll probably end up doing another show if there's any uh, new developments tomorrow. So, as always, it's a pleasure. Please like and subscribe, share the video, hit me with some comments, let me know what to do, what not to do, and I'm out. Peace.